guys, it's me Yolanda and this week I caked a giant bar of soap. I'm so happy you guys are all washing your hands as much as I normally do. Your health comes first so I hope you're doing everything you can to protect yourself and protect everyone around you. Here at How To Cake It, we are trying our best with the social distancing. Hi Orhan. No, don't go that close to the screen. It's what are you wearing? Oh, you're like fully in the spirit. All right, let's talk about this cake. Oh yes, back, back to that. Okay. I wanted this bar of soap to be as pink and gorgeous inside as it will be outside. So I'm gonna marble my batter. I prepared eight pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter, and then I divided that batter into three bowls. I'm using the same food coloring gel to make both batters. I'll just use more of it in one of the bowls. Now I'm gonna dollop all three batters, the plain vanilla batter, the light pink, and the dark pink, into two rectangular pans. And when I say dollop, just like I do with buttercream, I'm using a spatula, I'm dolloping the different colors in the pan, layering it in no particular order. I don't often use a ruler with cake batter. I've gotta find a way to do that. Now that all my batter is divided and dolloped between two pans, I wanna further marble these colors. So to do that, I'm just using a paring knife and I'm going to drag it back and forth through the batter. First, I'm going to do that horizontally and then I'm gonna do it vertically in both pans. It makes such a pretty pattern on the top of the batter. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's baked. I always love baking and I feel like I enjoyed it in particular this time because it just took my mind off of everything. Whenever I'm baking and caking, I find it hard to focus on anything other than that. I'm so excited to level this cake because I can't wait to see how the batter looks inside. So as usual, I'm using a ruler and a serrated knife to level each cake and the batter looks fantastic. And then I flip them over and I remove the caramelization from the bottom. Once I'm done that, I flip them both right side up and what I wanna do is trim them, I wanna trim both layers to the exact same size while removing the caramelization, caramelization, caramelization around the sides. For this, I used a ruler, serrated knife, and I just cut along the ruler and make sure to measure so that they're the same. Now I wanna cut the corners so that they're rounded. I'm going to use a circle cutter and just lay it on top of my cake as a template and then use a small serrated knife and cut downward around that circle cutter on all four corners on both cakes. Now I wanna slightly, ever so slightly, round down the four top edges of the cake. I lined my ruler up against each side of the cake and then stood it up and pressed it in. So now I, I've created sort of like a border or a frame. And then I used one of my homemade rulers, which is just matte board cut to different sizes that I like to keep. And I lined that up at the side of the cake and made an indent for height. And then I joined those lines by using a serrated knife and just cutting a slight curve. The footage is way better than me doing this. Time to simple syrup these cakes. The layer that will be the top with the curve, I'm gonna simple syrup the top of that cake and then I'm gonna flip them both over so that the flat sides are face up and simple syrup both layers. Now I can fill and stack this cake with Italian meringue buttercream. So I lay one layer down with the rounded side down Fill it with Italian meringue buttercream and spread it nice and even and then put the second layer on top with the slightly rounded side up. I'm gonna use all the excess buttercream that's oozing out the sides for my crumb coat and I'll use a little bit more if I need it. The crumb coat just has to be nice and thin and lock all the crumbs in place. And now I can chill it. And while it chills, I still haven't figured out how to make foam or lather. Now that my crumb coat is chilled and my hands are washed, it's time to ice this cake with more Italian meringue buttercream. I just need to ice it with a smooth layer of buttercream all around. I'm gonna use a bench scraper on the side 
I just really want to maintain the shape and make sure there's a nice finish for fondant. I still can't figure out how to make the lather or the soap suds around the bar of soap because I definitely want this bar of soap to look used because we should be washing our hands. Remember in the 80s when everyone had decorative soaps? Like you'd go to people's houses and in the powder room there'd be a dish full of dusty soaps? I always thought that was such an oxymoron. I only have one decorative soap, do you want to see it? You have a decorative soap? Get it now and I'm gonna film this. Go get it. Okay. It's gonna be some weird Dungeons and Dragons thing. Unless they make soap in the shape of Jennifer Lawrence. Hi, you're back! Okay, hold on. What is that? Cake? You have a decorative soap of a slice of cake? Yeah. Orhan, even I don't own that. I don't know whether to feel proud or sad. I'm gonna think, <laughs> I'm gonna think about that next time I'm baking. I mean, soap comes in all colors, but I've always liked the soaps that look kind of marbled. You know what I mean? So I wanna create that look, and for my marble, I'm using hot pink and white fondant. I have a little more pink than white, and what I'm gonna do is divide my pink fondant into four sections and my white fondant into three sections, and then I'm going to alternate rolling them into cords, and I lined them up against each other, alternating the colors. Now I'm gonna squeeze them together and twist and twirl the fondant. Once I've done that, I'm gonna knead it, but only a couple of times, because the more you knead it, if you just keep kneading it, you'll just get lighter pink fondant. We don't wanna erase the white, but when we roll it out, we want it to look like one. I found that when I marble fondant, the cross section always looks better than the surface, if that makes sense. You can see all this beautiful pink and white marbling. Smush them together, and then you really just wanna make sure to try and smooth the top in a nice marbled brick, and then begin to roll. Always measure your cake and make sure that you roll your fondant a little bigger than you need it. I love the way this looks. I need to marble every cake. From now on, I'm only making marbled cakes. I love soap. I love soap. I love soap. I love washing my hands with soap. Now it's time to pick up this gorgeous marbled fondant with a French rolling pin and drape it over my bar of soap cake. I know most of you are social distancing right now and I know you're washing your hands, but how else are you spending your time? Are you baking? Leave a comment below. What are you doing? Are you baking? What are you watching? I basically just want you to say you're baking and you're watching how to cake it. But we'll accept other comments. <laughs> making this cake, I realize how plain soap is. I should have made soap a hundred times. <laughs> Next week I'm making a blue bar. Once again, I'm using my ruler, I'm lining it up with each side, and with a sculpting tool, I'm just gently drawing lines on all four sides, and using a small circle cutter to keep that frame looking rounded at the corners the same way my cake does. And I kept thinking, what would I brand my soap? What do I want my soap to say to the world? So, <laughs> and I decided to write the words lather up. That's, that's what my soap is called. I have a thing for brands that tell you what they are. You know what I'm talking about? My soap is called lather up. The instruction is right on it. The most annoying part was the, the letters with holes in them, the, the cutter, the part that's the opening is not, does not come all the way down. I'm just gonna get the cutter. Okay, so, so this is a letter P. And you can see, this is the part that cuts the P, but the hole doesn't jut out as much as the end. So when I press this on my soap, the, the whole opening of the letter didn't press into the soap. I just dropped my cutter on the floor and I don't even care. Um, I'm gonna use a variety of cutters, a piping tip. I even have um, a coffee stir stick that I, I keep in my drawer. I've cut one side straight because I can use it to poke and make lines. And I'm just gonna carefully make 
the center of the A, the P, and the R. Hold on. This is how I feel. Every bone in my body wants to get up and wash that now. <laughs> I'm gonna move this bar of soap onto a giant soap dish. It's really just a big plastic platter, but it's perfect. Can we talk about how much I don't like the water that collects under soap? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know when you pick up a bar of soap and there's like a pool? The next step is to make this soap bar look used. This, look, this looks like a decorative soap right now. It looks like no one's touched it. It's like, just I been- I that you're gonna make a, like a fondant hair and put it on it. Ew! Orhan! No, I mean like wet, like somebody just washed their hands. Did, did you hear what he said? I can't even repeat it. I'm going to use piping gel and I'm gonna brush the entire surface. It's lather time. How do I do that? You know what? I think I need to go try something. I'll be right back. Okay guys, that worked. I think it worked perfectly. What looks foamy and lathery but is completely edible and would, if anything, would taste good with cake. That's why I don't wanna go the egg white route. I just think it's not a good idea at all. And I thought, what if I just put a tiny, 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 tiny drop of pink food coloring into the milk before I froth it? And then I can just scoop that froth here and there on the bar of soap and on the soap dish. And I have the feeling that like cotton candy, it would start to disintegrate in the air. But milk froth is really easy to make. I'll just make more with our coffee machine. All is good. Guys, I know you're home right now and I'm still here in the kitchen. I'm still baking and I would love to bake with you. We are launching a series of baking live streams today and the best part is they're happening every single week for the month of April. Whatever happens, we've got you. Click the link in the description below to see what baking projects we'll be doing and you'll also notice I have some special guests with me. So click below and let's bake together. Orhan, sing it with me. Let's, let's bake together. You're not singing. Baking you weather, weather. Times are good or bad, happy or sad. And yes, this is the spatula I use to color my batter. <laughs> I wish I had a bar of soap this big, actually. <laughs> it's as big as a sink. <laughs> you could just leave the soap in the sink and then rub your hands on it. And the good news is, it doesn't taste like soap. This is a soap for washing out the mouths of your children who are good. I will see you all next week and you can click right here for more cakes. Bye. Let's, let's bake together. I'm getting so much better. I really am.